We open on a limited edition jacket being made. Sansa checks her Tinder, and although she knows Littlefinger is a creep, she decided to swipe right anyway. She tells him how much of a bastard her ex-husband was, and how she's become very distrusting. Fucking classic Tinder date. Arya continues being bullied in the workplace by a psycho. She gets hyper uppercutted, told she'll never get a fucking pay rise, and then her boss asks her to poison a celebrity. It's a bit of a toxic Toxic environment, to be honest. She heads out to see her childhood has been pirated. Peer-to-peer -peer networks are distributing a really poor quality version of her father, and she wishes that she could issue a copyright takedown. She sees that actors and actresses are narcissistic wankers, and she studies the one she's supposed to kill. The one she's supposed to kill is the least annoying, but her boss is like, Oi, nah, I'm telling ya, fucking all actors are the same. Don't let them trick ya. Cut to Brano's cubby house. Although he's going through puberty, his dreams are unfortunately not a lot of fun, and he learns that his new mates are the clumsy scientists behind the apocalypse. They blame the nature of man, fucking classic scientists. Over at the Iron Islands, Theon tries his hardest to convince everyone to vote for his sis. Unfortunately, Euron chucks a trump and comes out of nowhere. The cantankerous stickler for the rules makes him drink seawater and die and vomit it and wear a branch. Meanwhile, Yara and Theon steal all the best boats. Euron asks everyone to build more without any indication of pay. They instantly regret voting for him. Danny tries to get angry at Jorah, but he's like, you can't get angry at me, I'm hell sick. He shows her his sickness. She's like, does it hurt? He says, nope. Surely it hurts. It honestly doesn't, but it does get itchy as fuck and I've been searching everywhere for an ointment. She commands him to to go find the ointment. Tyrion wants to drum up some good publicity for Danny while things are peaceful in Marine. He asks a religious Sheila to spread nice rumours about the government because people trust religious Sheilas. She fucking freaks the shit out of Varys though. Brano finds some KFC chicken bones and throws one at his mate. He's fully passed out. He decides to go on a solo trip, which quickly becomes dark and traumatic. The Night's King put a tracking device in his arm. At Castle Black, Jono cracks out the magnet board. The new group is trying to figure out how they can get more people to join their group. They decide to send out an invite to their uncle, Blackfish. Sansa gives Jono the limited edition jacket she made. He's like, oh, you fucking legend. She's proud as punch. Torment continues to imagine Brienne naked. Mira notices an army of dead wankers have rocked up to the cubby. Bran takes over Hordor's body and they head for the super secret tunnel. Summer goes in for a big attack but didn't really think it through. Tree Guy says fly you fools as the Night's King chops him up. Finally Mira yells hold the door to Hodor which is a shit task and causes him to have a seizure in the past. He gets ripped to shreds as he holds the stupid door. Fuck you, Brano, with your addiction blurring time space continuum paradoxes bullshit. Carl Sagan hates you, he just wanted to bang Liana. Crikey, this is our first big dose of emotional devastation this season. What a bloody brilliant scene and character. Tragic as fuck. I'm in denial over death as usual, but nah, I guess if we're gonna see the big fella in future, it'll probably be as a zombie. To take a seemingly insignificant character who we've always thought was a happy-go-lucky fun guy and a great DJ. Fuck yes, Hodor! Fuck yes, mate! and give him such a heart-wrenching backstory or future story or both is unbelievable. Brano has coasted through things for a while, so it was his turn to learn a tough lesson. His shenanigans fucked over his direwolf, his mentor, the last survivors of an ancient race, and young Willis who only needed to exist from this point to hold a fucking door. Well done to Mira for keeping her shit together while everyone was off tripping balls. You're alright, Mira. You're 
All right, mate. I love when the Night King and his zombie army get some screen time. I'm a big fan of horror, so I'm really impressed with how the show and books can be a fantasy inspired by history, a sci-fi, a drama, a melodrama, a comedy, a martial arts film, a romance, a bromance, a porno, a western, and then change gears to make us feel dread and terror and suspense like a classic work of horror. The seeds of horror were planted in Season 1, Episode 1, Scene 1. It's just been nice to see this tone grow and flourish. I don't talk about tone and Game of Thrones as a genre hybrid much, so I just wanted to take a second to acknowledge how amazing it is to have so many genres and feelings smoothly running together. I genuinely loved every scene this week. From the opening with Sansa sticking it to Littlefinger, to the love story I didn't know I actually cared about so much, to the epic ending of course. The episode is called The Door, and within the action of holding a door, I'd say we're thematically exploring service, obedience, and the sacrifices that come with that, usually your life, as times of war become worse. Beyond Mr. Door being the most emotional representation of service and sacrifice, we also see this in the White Walkers. The children of the forest tried to create White Walkers that would serve and obey, but they've ended up becoming rogue. Arya is told that servants don't ask questions. She has to unquestioningly obey all instructions if she wants to be a great assassin. Littlefinger says he'll beg for his life to serve Sansa. Theon remains true to serve his sister, Jorah needs to find a cure so he can serve his queen and the love of his life, Varys and Tyrion serve Danny by sacrificing their own egos to make sure she gets credit for peace in Marine. even actors are a representation of servants. Sorry actors, that sounds harsh. I find the best ones know how to serve but also question shit. It's like Hodor is the representation of people mentally oppressing questions, and I guess a semblance of positivity is that you can't do it to people unless you 100% take over their brains. And I don't think there's science on earth that allows human brains to 100% be controlled during war and to have them spend a life focused on one task unless we become robots. Fuck! This is such a smart merging of character and theme. Look at this. Look at this bloke. He knows exactly what he's writing towards with this one. How did you decide on the name Hodor? Uh, I don't know, you have to keep reading. I guess for us book wankers, this is a decent sized spoiler, but it's no worries. I actually can't wait to read this shit on top of seeing it so well executed in the show. I think Euron is shaping up to be a solid human villain, hopefully to replace Ramsay. The first thing he wants to do when given power is kill his niece and nephew. That's a strong start to being a fuckhead. I enjoyed how Varys was the one sticking it to religion this week. Oh, and I love how the lines are being blurred as to who Azor Ahai could be. I mentioned the story of Azor in an earlier review and left a link in the description to an Alt Shift X video. I'll chuck that link below this video as well. Melisandre has a strong belief Jono is the new Azor, but across the narrow sea the bizarro Melisandre reckons Danny is Azor resurrected. Bloody classic religion. Gee whiz, science, magic, beliefs and gods, shonky adaptations, service, obedience, sacrifice. Seriously, what a fucking efficient episode on so many levels. We are now at the halfway mark for this season and I personally think it is in top-notch form.